Good morning, family. Thursday morning, and um, we are studying. I am a disciple who prays, and this is um, this is part two um, because we've been looking at the phrase um, from verse number nine, Matthew chapter six, verse number nine. Our Father who art in heaven. This is the phrase we've been studying. Hallowed be thy name. And the goal this week has to been has been to issue some challenges that help you um, really to flesh out what uh, what a holy God is all about and how you actualize that in your prayer life. And we've talked about um, looking at the the importance of the name of God that. The name uh, speaks to his authority, speaks to his divine person, it speaks to his uh, unimaginable power. But then how do you access that in your prayer? You do it by recognizing that his name ought to be held in regard, that um, the person of God ought to have uh, covenant exclusivity, that nobody else ought to, ought to be in a place where God is regarded. But then number two, his name is honored because of his renown. Nobody can do what God does. He is your help. He's your healer. He is your hero. Then number three, on yesterday, we talked about the, the beautiful reality that we are ushered into the unseen realm, uh, the, the, uh, the spiritual backdrop, as it were, of God's residence, and that when we see that about our God, we need to remember that he is constantly uh, being heralded, s spoken of, uh, sung, sung about, and, and applauded by an innumerable amount of regents, angels that, that give him praise. I challenge you to look at Isaiah chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 5 and also Revelation chapter 7. And the significance in doing that is that we are allowed to enter into that unseen realm when we pray. We are blessed to be able uh, to be in company with those angels and speaking to a holy God. And when you think about the majesty that he holds and you think about the beauty of who he is, it ought to really, really encourage you because he allows us to be there. And we are who we are, broken, faulty, sinful, and yet we're given the privilege of being there. On today, when you pray to this, this, this holy God, I want to challenge you um, to access the holiness of God, not only through your regard and not only through, through acknowledging his renown and the, the regents that give him praise, but I want to challenge you to do so because um, you knowing him to be a holy God gives you the ability to call on the name of God, the authority, the power, the dominion, and the might. It's harnessed by your reliance on that God. And, and the way I build my reliance on that God is first and foremost through my devotion. When I'm devoted to God, um, and that is recognized not only in my everyday life, but recognized in my mentality, the, the, the switch for being dependent on God ought to always stay on. Don't don't be quick to, to say, you know what, I'm going to take this to God in prayer, but then pick it back up again. No, if he is a holy God, if he's set aside and, and no one can do what he can do and, and no one is like him and, and no one is where he is, then when I'm devoted to him, my devotion is complete. My devotion is through and through. In fact, my devotion is seen because I should not want to go a moment without talking to, being with, and acknowledging my God. Everything I do ought to be through a devotion uh, to who God is. And that includes that includes praising his name. That includes admitting your guilt. That includes um, giving God praise for being in a relationship with him. But more importantly, I am relying on God through my devotion to him. But then not only that, number two, I build reliance on this holy God through my direct appeal to him. Why go to someone else? When Jehovah is your God, why go to someone else when Jesus is Lord? Why go to someone else when the Holy Spirit is moving not only in you, but in mediation to God on your behalf? So I directly appeal to God to handle my life. I directly appeal to God to minister to my family, to give me the comfort that I need to heal and deliver, to, to give me strength, to bring me sobriety, to keep me 
positive, to not allow me to be depressed. I, I directly appeal to God for my wisdom, for my direction, for what I do next. I directly appeal to God in moments when it's dark and I don't know what to do. I directly appeal to God and that builds my reliance on him. So not only is reliance built on my devotion and my direct appeal to God, but my reliance is built basically on my complete dependence on him. We studied a number of passages and I want to challenge you to go back and look at them. One of the ones that just blesses my my thinking is when King David fought Goliath and David said to Goliath, you know, you come out here with spears and swords and and all this uh, pomp and circumstance, but I come in the name of the Lord. I come in the name of the God of the armies and and that name, that authority was David's dependence and David's devotion and David's direct appeal. You come with what you want to come with. I'm coming with the name of the Lord. I depend on him. I, and, and not only that, but I think about J Joshua and Joshua was fighting and Joshua depended on God to give him the ability uh, to wage war and to finish what God called him to do. Joshua chapter 10. I don't think about I think about the fight that we read about in Second Chronicles chapter 20, where where that dependence on God was echoed, where God even told them, you don't have to worry about this. Told Jehoshaphat, you don't have to worry. You shall not need to fight this day because the battle belongs to the Lord. Think about it. Your dependence on God is a dependence on him in any fight that you have. It's a dependence on him when you need faith to keep on moving. And it's a dependence on him to navigate a future that you have no idea what's up ahead of you. When we pray to a holy God, we're praying to a holy God that we know that the power of heaven is accessible, contingent on your reliance on that power. God's not going to force himself on you. But when you and I learn how to really give ourselves and give our situations and even give those matters where we are in question to God, then God promises I'll handle what you what you don't have any idea how to handle. I'll fix what you don't have the ability to fix. I'll be where you can't be. Think about it. He's already in your tomorrow while you're sitting here worried about today. That's the reason why later on Jesus would say, don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient for today is the evil thereof. Here's your challenge. Your challenge on today is to practice depending on God. When you pray to this holy God, practice complete devotion. Practice a direct appeal to him. Practice dependence on him for every facet of your day, every minute, every, every aspect. Give it to him and don't back off of it because he's more than able. I challenge you to go look at those stories. Look at, look at the story of Goliath again. Look at the story of Joshua in chapter 10. Look over at 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and see the beauty of depending on God in all of your fights. When you have faith, trepidation, depend on him for the future that you can't hold. And when you do so, God will, God will bless you in ways that even, even scripture has yet to, un to write. All right? Listen, I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me and, and let's watch our God uh, change things. Bless you. Have a good day.